Hi, I'm David Hill, Paralympic athlete, cold water swimmer and a swimming coach, and I'm here to give you my top tips for cold water swimming. I'm here today at Rockwell Lido with Zone 3 and Outer Swim Swimming Club. When we first get into the water, we'll notice we'll take a sharp breath in, and that's our body's natural response to the, to the shock of the cold water. What we do need to do is focus on matching that with a big breath out. Otherwise, we're not gonna get any more air back in again. So submerge your body in the water, allow yourself to embrace that cold, get your breathing under control, maybe speak in long sentences uh, with your buddy that you're swimming with, and then begin to start splashing some water on your face or putting your face under the water and start blowing some bubbles. So for me, swimming is all about the community as well. Swimmers are such a lovely bunch of people. So every time I go open water swimming, I always swim with other people. That's partly to do with safety as well. So I can keep an eye on my buddy, have continuous conversations in the water, and I can really kind of check and challenge how the cold water is affecting them and whether they're still coherent. Can they hear me? Can they still speak? And are they shivering too much? If you are swimming with other people, don't let your ego run away and compare yourself to them. Know your limits and if you're starting to get really cold, then please get out. Another tip is to check your exit points. So your exit point is where your robe is going to be waiting for you. So check any uh, weather conditions, tides, currents, wind, anything that's going to affect you, maybe going off course ever so slightly. So keep an eye on your exit point so you can get warm after. So really important to be visible in the water. So as a minimum, wearing a brightly coloured swim cap. You can also choose to um, wear a toe float around your waist as well. And that's really useful for not only being visible, but um, being a useful buoyancy aid. So if you do need a little bit of a rest in the water, you can just hug your float and take a little bit of a rest and get your breath back. If you're opting to swim in the same place each week and particularly in tidal water, I'd encourage you to count your strokes and get used to how long it takes you or how many strokes it takes you to get to certain landmarks. That will give you an indication of maybe what the tide or the current is doing that day in order to make your way safely back to your uh, start point. Something you need to concern yourself with is something called after drop. This is where your core body temperature will continue to drop um, after you get out of the water. This means we're going to need to think about the length of time that we're in the water. So if you're shivering in the water, remember your temperature is still going to drop when you get out. So make sure we get out before we start to excess shiver in the water, because after drop can occur for 30 to 40 minutes afterwards. This is why it's really important to jump out, get our parker jacket on and warm your core up first. I would advise you not to jump into a warm shower as soon as you get out, because that might warm your skin up, but leave you with a cold core. Remember, shivering is a natural response to protect your organs. So we don't wanna stop ourselves shivering too early. Allow yourself to naturally warm up. So just get yourself in your parka and get yourself a nice warm drink. It would be great if you could make cold water swimming your habit and part of your weekly routine. That's how we create habits, is really celebrating uh, your achievements. So again, don't compare yourself to other people. Just be really proud of the time that you can spend in the water. Remember, we need a minimum of 90 seconds exposure to the cold to classify as a cold water swimming experience and to get that acclimatic effect um, session on session. Cold water swimming has huge mental health benefits. When we get into that water, it is a shock to our system. It's that flight or fight response that is activated. But I know if I can deal with that cold and that shock, it allows me to be a little bit more resilient or certainly build up that resilience to then deal with other stresses and challenges that happen in my life. For those of you that are gonna be open water swimming out in the sea, I would encourage you to learn bilateral breathing. So this means breathing to both sides it's on an odd stroke count. This is really useful for when swimming in, a, in maybe a wavy condition, so you get a choice of which direction to breathe, so not breathing into the oncoming waves, and therefore not gulping in water. 
Earlier on in this video, I talked about swimming with others, and I'd urge you to find your community of like-minded people to access cold water swimming safely. We've been swimming here today at Brockwell Lido with Out to Swim, so I'd urge you to get online and find your community to swim safe in cold water with others.